of the result. Tell us, Mr. Ashley, anything about the outbreak of labour controversies just come on and whether the President is likely to crack down on Mr. Lewis in the near future. Uh, well, gentlemen, uh, of course I've been having a few press conferences in the last few weeks, <laughs> which uh, emboldens me a little bit because uh, they're one of the things I'm naturally very frightened about. But uh, I should like to just tell you a word or two about uh, the time I had on the other side. It might be useful if I just gave you a very brief <coughs> itinerary. We uh, set off and, uh, as usual, we are hung up a few days at Lisbon and then got to New York and uh, almost immediately I went on to Washington and spent a day, or well, the best part of a day, with the President. I then had to switch back to New York, and there I stayed on for the first three or four days of the ILO conference. I then went to Canada for three and a half days. I then came back to New York for a couple of days, <coughs> and then on to Washington, and uh, so, with a few hold-ups, back to this country. Now, as you know, the ILO is mainly concerned with uh, labour conditions and uh, social security. <coughs> and uh, our principal business was the discussion of the report of the acting director. And uh, rather more than 80 speeches were delivered on that theme. <coughs> I contributed to that flow of oratory. The uh, conference was opened by a speech from Miss Perkins and speeches from the Governor and the Mayor of New York, and it was closed by a speech by President Roosevelt, where we went down for the final conference at the White House. Now, the notable thing about those speeches was this that whether they came from representatives of countries that are still unconquered in this war and are fighting, or from countries which have been overrun, or from neutral countries, there was a very high degree of unanimity. And uh, the principal resolution that was passed was sponsored by the United States a delegation. And in its first clause, it laid down as an absolute condition precedent for achieving the aims of the international labor organization that Hitlerism must be defeated. It, in the course of the, my journey, I visited Canada. I had several days up there. I uh, saw the Parliament in session. I met Mr. Mackenzie King and a number of his ministers. And uh, I saw some works, munition works. Well, I thought the work was very good indeed. And I also had the pleasure of me visiting one of the air training stations. Uh, that was a very impressive spectacle because there were gathered there young men from this country from the Dominions and a good many from the United States uh, working together in harmony and I couldn't help feeling uh, that in addition to their training for their work in the Air Force it was also an admirable training for the future of the world that these young men should be getting together there. Well, uh, that's rather an echo of almost the first question that was put to me when I landed in New York. And I replied then that uh, without a very full knowledge it's extremely rash to pass judgments on the industrial questions that were perplexing another country than one's own. And I should prefer not to be a prophet on this matter. 
I think one requires a very big knowledge of uh, the conditions of labor and the labor movement in the United States of America before one can pass an absolute judgment on that. One must